Okay, y'all so get into this drama real quick. Because some fresh allegations are coming out that Jay-Z is allegedly being used by his labels as a front for trafficking women. If y'all thought that the situation with Diddy was bad enough, y'all are going to be surprised to learn some of the incredible sinister stories that just came to life, according to new reports. There was a long, long list of women who were allegedly trafficked by Jay-Z, and some of them are well-known women, including allegedly Rihanna, Tiara, Marie Singer, Amil, and so many more. Y'all remember those rumors about how Jay-Z and Rihanna had an affair, right? And Rihanna's publicist had to come out and claim that he made the whole thing up for publicity. Well, the same publicist is now coming out to tell the full story. And y'all will not believe the insane stories he has to tell. Did Ye's really pay Rihanna's father $500,000 for Rihanna and did he really pass Tiara Marie around the industry before she turned legal? Let's talk about it now. The nature of Rihanna's real relationship with Jay is something that people have been talking about for a long time, and the rumors have always remained strong as F. Rihanna got into the industry when she was just a teenager and Jay-Z was her mentor. Of course, they went on to achieve great things, and Rihanna even won her first Grammy with Ye's. Working with Jay and having a collaboration with him is, is just one of those things that everyone dreams to do in their musical career. And here I am at 19 years old with the number one single and featuring Jay-Z. It's just, I can't fathom it sometimes. It's just too much for me to, it's overwhelming sometimes. However, rumors started to circulate that Jay-Z and Rihanna secretly had something going on even though he was married to Beyonce at the time. At first, people didn't pay a lot of attention to it, because you guys know how fake rumors make rounds in the industry all the time. However, the rumors didn't go away. Instead, they got stronger by the day. The next thing we knew, her publicist, Jonathan Hay, came forward to take blame for the rumors, claiming that he was just chasing clout. He said the PR stunt that I did was out of desperation. To help break Ponderlay, he wrote it was reckless, and I didn't think it was going to work. I was just throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what would stick. I didn't think it would be this big story. But now, knowing that people are profiting from speculations and opinions about her really turns my stomach. I'm ashamed that I'm even talking about this. I just want to put this rumor to rest once and for all, but we believed him at the time because publicists are known to plan publicity stunts all the time, so we thought that was the situation. But, but it didn't take long for some shady business to start. And this time it was when Rihanna talked about how she came to be signed. Jay-Z, now everybody knows the story behind this, or at least we know the brushed up version. Of what was told to us from what we know now, the real truth is more sinister than we could ever imagine. So Rihanna grew up in Barbados. You guys know that, right? Well, through a stroke of fate, she caught the attention of a music exec who was on vacation, and she got flewed out to perform with Lareed and Jay-Z in the US all alone. This would have rated some real flag. But for some reason, people never sat down to think about that Rihanna, who was only 16, meant that she should have been accompanied by a parent or guardian. But allegedly she wasn't even more, she was kept waiting in the offices until 3 o'clock. Because Jay-Z was reportedly under strict orders to sign her at all cost. Now, I don't know about you all, but it definitely seems weird to me to keep a 16-year-old child in the office until 3 o'clock. In an interview, Rihanna revealed that Jay threatened to throw her out of a window of his 27th floor office if she refused to sign. I was, so, I was shaking, literally. But the moment I walked into the office, the atmosphere was so warm and welcoming. And you had and to sing a cappella for him? Yes, I had to sing. I sang Ponder Replay. I sang another ballad from the album uh -huh. last time. Yeah. So then what did he say to you? He said something to you. Oh, yes. He said, we don't sign songs here. We sign artists. And there was this little pause. And I was nervous. But then he said, I were interested. And there was this sudden feel of relief. So then he said something about a window and a door. Oh, then he said, <laughs> <laughs> he said it will work. Oh, I did a lot of work on you this lady. He said, um, there are two ways to leave here. Either through the door with the deal sign or through this window. And we're on the 29th floor. <laughs> so he was like, where's the pen? Where's the paper? I'm signing. Yeah. And I'm sure working with Jay-Z, you've met Beyonce. That's right. Intimidating a 16-year-old at 3 o'clock in the morning is definitely nasty work and also is forcing her to sign a contract with threats. 
And speaking of signing a contract, it's still unclear whether or not it was even legal for Jay-Z to do it. See, Rihanna was a minor at the time, and minors usually aren't able to sign legally anything binding, especially a contract, if there is no parent or guardian there, y'all. They're saying she didn't even have a lawyer on hand to protect her interests, so she could have been signing her. Life away for all she knew and might have. And according to these new reports, she basically did. Jaguar Wright was one of the first people to raise this alarm because she claimed that Jay-Z allegedly trafficked Rihanna from Barbados using his label as a cover. She then went on to claim that Jay-Z allegedly paid Rihanna's father $500,000 when she got to the S. Discovered Rihanna at 3 a.m. in the morning in a hotel on the island where she comes from with no parental supervision. And then she was put on a private plane. one country to another without parental supervision. And she ended up in a boardroom with Mr. Carter without parental supervision. <laughs> Y'all got young children, would you just let your daughter leave and go to a whole other country with some money? Absolutely not. Doing talent shows at 3 a.m. <laughs> so you're saying that the rumors are true. There are rumors uh, circulating that Rihanna was actually trafficked here. Are you saying that that's- Starting that's... to sound that way, don't you? Because her daddy ain't show up till 24 hours later to pick up a half a million dollar check for his daughter's ass. Maybe we should look more into that album energy. That album cover was just steady. A child bra with a crown over her head. Blood smear on her face! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How don't people see SOSs? Now this is just screaming red flags and shades of crazy. But why on earth would Jay-Z pay Rihanna's father that much money? The pieces of the puzzle are starting to line up. When you remember that Rihanna revealed that her father was violent towards her and her mom, and he would often hurt them physically according to Jaguar. Her father allegedly sold her to Jay-Z to be trafficked, and her pub just kind of spilled that same tea. But even before we get to what the publicist has to say, let's talk about how Jaguar writers also claim that Yeis would allegedly pimp Rihanna out to other men in the industry, forcing her to give mouth action to them at industry events. According to Jaguar, this was one of the incidents that triggered Chris to put hands on Rihanna back in 2009. Because she was in there giving that job in the coat closet when, when Chris Brown came and he said, so it's sucking. Then he said, I'm done with you. And he stormed out of Clive Davis's house got into his very expensive car and Rihanna chased after him. She gets in the car and started fighting on him because he embarrassed her for calling her a and saying in front of everybody that she gave him the herpes at Clyde Davis' house the night before the Grammy. 